If I had a penny for every time I've heard the press release for a new shmup claim the game or its developers took inspiration from the classics of the arcade era, I'd have... Well, I probably wouldn't even have a full dollar, but still, I have heard it a few times, and it's almost always a signal that the game in question is going to be nothing like the classics of the arcade era. In the case of Wolf Flame, however, we really do have a game that's imbibed deeply the spirit of classic older releases, warts and all. Developed by Astroport and brought to the Switch by Pixelnest, who kindly supplied my copy, Wolf Flame really does look, feel, sound and play just like an early 90s shmup. Not one that would be first on anyone's list as an all-time great, but I imagine still one that would be fondly remembered by those who played it. That is to say, Wolfflame isn't going to blow your mind, but it does have the potential to offer those harking for a bit of simple, old-fashioned vertical action a perfectly satisfying time. Now the phrase classic arcade action gets used a lot, not just in shmup press releases, but in mainstream reviews as well. Which can be a bit odd, because, well what does it mean? It could mean the classic bullet hell action of a mid-2000s cave game, but then it might also mean the classic 8-bit action of a Space Invaders clone. Or it could be referring to anywhere in the huge space in between those two extremes. In reality, we have to be a little more specific, and in the case of Wolf Flame, what the game is closest to is a lot of early 90s shmups before bullet hell was really a thing, and even more specifically, it's positioned somewhere between the proper old-school releases and the manic shooters that were starting to become popular. If you've played the early Raiden games, you'd be in the right ballpark. But Wolf Flame doesn't just pay tribute to games of that ilk, it is most definitely its own beast. The controls are simple as simple can be. You have a shot button and a bomb button. Bombs aren't quite screen clearing, but they do a lot of damage and keep you safe when dropped defensively. For attack purposes, you're going to want to make sure you're right up in the top half of the screen before unleashing your payload. Your shot starts as a simple straight shot, but you'll quickly be picking up upgrades which come in the shape of pods that stick to the left and right of your ship. Pods come in three varieties, a red spread shot, a powerful green pulse laser, and a blue lock-on laser. All move up through five power levels as you pick up more power-ups, but the most unique feature is that you can have different pods on each side, giving you, for example, a wide shot firing to the left and a pinpoint laser shooting to the right. These weapons are all quite different, but oddly, while you may end up with your own preferences, you probably won't find the weapons you have equipped actually affecting too heavily how you approach the game. Beyond that, there's not a lot of innovation on display here, but you know what, sometimes that's okay. And it's clear in the case of Wolfflame that this is precisely the sort of stripped back experience the developers were going for. It won't be to everyone's tastes, but if the thought of breaks and double breaks and complex multipliers is the stuff of your nightmares, what Wolf Flame offers may well come as a welcome change. It won't come as much surprise then to hear that the scoring too is on the simple side. Killing enemies nets you points and there are stars lying around that can be scooped up for decent stage end bonuses. Grabbing shot pickups after you're already at full power is another way to increase your score. It's all mostly academic though as there's only one high score stored and that can be only seen during play in the opposite corner to your current score. That may be a deliberate throwback to simpler times, but it's also a bit too simple in this case, and the sacrifice of harming replayability is not worth it simply for maybe drumming up some sort of nostalgia. The simplicity of the gameplay and scoring extends to the visuals, with backgrounds and enemy designs in the first half of the game having a fairly prosaic military style and a mostly drab palette of brown, grey and green. You may even have been thinking I'm showing a lot of footage of the same stage here, but I can assure you, I'm not. A lot of them just aren't that different from each other. The second half does switch things up, but there's never anything terribly exciting. One of the latter stages also features one of my visual pet peeves, with you dodging damage dealing asteroids against a background of non damage dealing asteroids, with very little to distinguish the two. A nice touch is the way the stages run into each other, and there is something interesting about the mechanical design in place on a lot of the enemies, and taking them out is very satisfying, especially the ones that fall to the ground before erupting in a secondary explosion. Overall I'd say the visuals are competent without ever really lighting up the screen. There is a tatty mode available from the main menu, but with no visual options to play around with at all, it gives the game an odd elongated effect by expanding the playing field to fit the Switch's long screen. Now I know some people do like to play like that, 
but for the rest of us it would have been nice to have an option of playing vertically but properly scaled. Still definitely better to have a less than perfectly realised option to rotate than none at all. In terms of what you'll be dealing with, enemies roll in from a variety of positions and outside of bosses tend to fire off single or fairly narrow barrages of shots. There are two main types of shot you'll face. One is quite slow moving orange shots that usually spread out and require weaving through. The other is high speed purple shots that require either very quick twitch reactions, practice or a keen eye for any pre-fire signals to avoid. The mix of these shot types does give the game some variety and for the most part it is good fun to play. However, they're also arguably the game's weakest aspect. The problem being that the fast sudden shots are all too often simply too fast and too sudden, resulting in deaths where you barely even know what's happened, and the slow spread shots are all too often too slow and too spread out, making them too easy to glide through with barely a second glance. That is, in normal mode at least, in insane mode, complaints about slow moving bullets are well and truly eviscerated. A side effect of these shot types can be that the game lulls you into a false sense of security as you make your way through early stages by just rocking side to side without thinking too much, only to be struck by a lightning speed rocket searing in from stage left without so much as a buy your leave. It can be a little frustrating, but your attention doesn't drift, a bit of patience and practice will usually see you through. Another controversial issue is going to be the checkpoint system the game employs. A lot of people don't like checkpoints, and I'm no exception. But in this case there are a few mitigating factors. One is that when you respawn you can take down an enemy plane to release a special power up which will restore whatever weapons you had when you got hit. The second is that there are a couple of checkpoints per stage so you don't usually have too far to repeat. The game also auto saves at the start of each new stage so even in a worst case scenario you can, if you so wish, reload the stage also with your weapon setup intact. So Wolfflame is, in short, a faithful but basic tribute to early 90s shmups. It doesn't do anything spectacular or particularly novel, and its visuals could, for the most part, be charitably described as muted. If you're looking for a relentlessly thrilling, fast-paced shmup, you're not going to find it here. However, that's not what it's aiming for, and despite its basic nature, I have to say I enjoyed it quite a lot and found it a nice change of pace. Despite the flaws I've mentioned, it does do a really good job of getting the basics down right, and it's all too easy to imagine walking into an arcade, moving past Tatsujin, Raiden 2 and Aero Fighters, to a slightly less well used cabinet with Wolf Flame emblazoned across its top. I'd give this a 7 out of 10, but especially given its price, I do recommend it to anyone with an interest in the shmups of an earlier era. This is actually going to be the first of three reviews of Astroport shmups I'll be putting out and it's a pretty positive start. Look out for the other two soon and as ever, thank you for watching, cheers.